Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is episode 6 where last time we just barely escaped the planet Taris as it was torn to pieces by uh, Malak's fleet, the Sith fleet annihilating the city that we spent so much time in, like doing side quests for people, like helping people, and it was just gone. And like for those of you that have seen uh, Bad Batch, like the, you know, it's very reminiscent of that. You can see that there were, it almost evokes those same feelings. Um, just like another one of those story or like lore things from Knights of the Old Republic that they sort of like echo in uh, in modern Star Wars content. It has that like that just feeling of like utter tragedy seeing uh, something that you spend a lot of time in and getting to know the place just ripped to shreds. Uh, but we escaped and we made it to the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine where we have a lot of force inside of us. We have a lot of force inside of us. Um, and the Jedi Council on Dantooine have noted us as a special case. We are an exception to their standard rules of how they would usually train, which I just find like so bizarre um, that we're just we're just some guy with a soul patch, you know. We're just some guy with a soul patch, but apparently we are special enough. <laughs> we are we're, like the circumstances, I guess, are, uh, are dire enough to bring us in and train us in the ways of the Force, which is just like really, really intriguing. So I'm, I'm keen to see how this plays out. Um, we're taking along Candorus and Zalba in our group right now, uh, but I believe. I believe we just have to touch base with, with Bastila now. So we're going to head to the Jedi Council chambers. And see what they have to say. Now, I'm going to need to try and remember... I'm going to need to try and remember names of all of these characters. Because there's a lot. The only one that I have remembered out of the Jedi Council is Vandar. Because it's the Yoda species. <laughs> and it's voiced by Tom Kane. Which is just so cool. To just have, like, you know... The, the voice of animated Yoda, essentially. Just really just confirm for us that apparently they all sound the same. I can't wait for Grogu to have the exact same voice. <laughs> Even though unfortunately, because, uh, you know, Tom Kane has actually suffered um, some unfortunate, um, like, medical situations recently. Like, he had a had a stroke. Um, so he, he might not ever voice act again, which is actually, like, really, really heartbreaking and tragic because Tom Kane has a really good, like, resume of, like, characters that his voice so I, I do hope that he recovers not just for voice acting but for his own like personal uh, physical and mental health but um, it's just sad to like think about like these characters that he's voiced and how iconic they are especially like a character like Yoda and then just to get like to get sad about being like oh like I can't just be like ah oh, can't wait for Grogu to be voiced by Tom Kane because it's like it's a bit bit of an unfortunate circumstance um, but just hearing that voice and also in the way that Vandar speaks is very cool. It's not like, you know, um, spoken in riddles. Uh, he speaks he speaks quite clearly. But there they are over there. So we've got uh, the Jedi Council and Bastila. So cool. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have shared a dream. A vision of Malak and Revan in the ancient ruins here on Dantooine. These ruins have long been known to us, but we believe them to be merely burial mounds. Perhaps they're more than we first suspected, if Revan and Malak found something there. Oh yeah, because uh, so we saw that our, our last vision, our like flashback or whatever that we saw was of Jedi versions of the characters, because Malak didn't look like how Malak looks now. Um, something called the Starforge? What? How would Bastila know if we shared a dream? That's actually a good question. I kind of want to know about that. She says she has felt your presence within the dream. The presence she has felt within you ever since... Master Vandar. Ever since Taurus. It is not unknown for this to happen between two people strong in the Force. Bastila has described this shared dream to the Council in great detail. We feel it is more than a dream. It is a vision. The Force is acting through you, as it acts through Bastila. Hmm. He got cut off there, and he and he 
like course corrected? That's strange. Also, he's just like blinking like this. He's like, whoa. <laughs> Bastos described the shared dream, so it's a vision. The force is acting through you as it acts through Bastila. You and Bastila share a powerful connection to the force and each other. This is not unheard of. Connections often form between master and student, but rarely does a bond develop so quickly. Whatever dangers may lie ahead, we cannot ignore the destiny that has brought you and Bastila here to us, together. Hmm. So, our, you know, recruitment onto the Endar Spire seems like to be a little more than just mere coincidence of just being like, Oh yes, here I am, I was doing what I was doing and now I'm working here. It's almost as if the Force has, you know, pushed this moment to happen apparently, which is just very, very interesting. We're a special guy, apparently. All of the power of the Force located entirely in my chin region on my soul patch. <laughs> in Star Wars, I guess it's called a... We'll call it a Force patch. <laughs> you and she are linked, as is your fate to hers. Together, you two may be able to stop Darth Malak and the Sith. But do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. Such thoughts are the path to the dark side. The way of the light is long and difficult, as you must learn. Are you ready for such hardship? Are you ready for such hardship? Voice acting is so good. Why is why are we just able to keep lying at this point? Of course, I seek to follow the light. We just keep lying. Just be like, we're going to be evil. <laughs> I will try my best. And now, oh my god. If, if we get a do or do not line right now, <laughs> I will try my best. Do or do not. There is no try. Understand that there is little choice in this matter. For you or us. Across the galaxy, the numbers of our order dwindle. We have sent many Jedi in quest of a way to thwart Malak's advance. Many have not returned. The Sith hunt the Jedi down like animals, ambushing and assassinating our brothers wherever they are found. We fear it is only a matter of time until they discover even this hidden refuge. Other Jedi have fallen from the light and embraced the dark side giving their allegiance to the Sith and Malak, their Dark Lord. Damn. All of the Dark Jedi. I, um... Hmm. I kind of wish that when we had subtitles that it would show the character's name who was speaking. Especially when I'm trying to remember the Jedi Council's names. But it'll be... Once we're out of dialogue, I'll be able to, like, highlight them and try and... Try and remember. Um, well, we know that Jedi are turning to the Dark Side. The lure of the dark side is not easy to resist. Malak's power grows as more and more planets fall to his conquering armies. If Malak is not stopped, the Republic will fall, and the Jedi will be hunted to extinction. The galaxy will enter a time of darkness and tyranny, not seen for a thousand generations. The Council has decreed that you and Bastila must investigate the ancient ruins you dreamed of, once the Council deems you ready. Perhaps there you will find some clue, some explanation of how Revan and Malak were corrupted. And perhaps there you shall find a way to stop them. Okay, interesting. They're just like, yep, you can go there when you're ready. The Force flows through you like no student we have ever seen. But you're willful and headstrong, a dangerous combination. Before we send you to investigate the ruins, you must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise, you are doomed to fail. Interesting. We must begin your training at once. You have a destiny upon you that you must be prepared to face. The entire fate of the galaxy is upon you. I can only hope you will prove up to the task. The path you have chosen to walk is difficult. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands of the Order. Meditation will teach you to channel the power of the Force. <laughs> to truly understand the way of the Jedi, you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek wisdom in the teachings of the great masters of our Order. A Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. 
You and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited, and your progress amazing. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You have done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. Pastor Soon your apprenticeship jealous. will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first, you must prove yourself worthy. <laughs> Bastila was looking so like, she was looking annoyed. She was just like looking at us getting congratulated. She's like, God damn it, I've spent years doing this ever since I was a child and you've done it in weeks. This is, this is very, very bizarre. So we're just like, we're the special force guy doing the force training. How interesting. I love how, what the, what this um, Jedi was saying about, you know, like the Republic will fall and like all of this kind of stuff. It's just like so so accurate to the events of revenge of the sith which was before which uh this game came out before that as well but it's just like it's so it so relatable to those events just you know war and light versus dark being such a cyclical event where history repeats itself you know all of the time so i became a padawan in a couple of weeks we had our jedi training montage but instead of any fancy music um Instead of any fancy music, it was just Master Zar's um, speech. So his name's Master Zar. I'll try and remember that. In the traditions and customs of our order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations, you must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. I am ready for the tests, Master Zar. These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from Apprentice to Padawan, and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the Code. Return when you feel you are ready for this challenge. Interesting. We're gonna, we're gonna learn some stuff. Zar Leston. Jedi Trials. The Jedi Council on Dantooine has decided to train you in the ways of the ancient Jedi Order. After much initial training, your first task will be to learn the precepts of the Jedi Code. This code is the path by which all Jedi should lead their lives. Attachment is forbidden! <laughs> you must not love. You would say that we are encouraged to love. Vandar Tokair, Dorak, no last name. Vruk Lamar, what's your last name? Bastila, Dorak, Vandar Tokair, Vruk Lamar. So, Zar, Vruk, Vandar, Dorak. Good, good names, guys. I see you insist on wandering the halls of our enclave when you should be busy studying your lessons. I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. You do not know the Jedi Code. <laughs> Without knowledge of those doctrines, all your training will be for naught. All Jedi must know the Code. Its tenets are the fundamental teachings of our order. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. Learn these truths, Apprentice, or we shall all regret the decision to accept you into the Order. That's so cool. Um, I'm familiar with the Jedi Code and the Sith Code, I believe. Um, not like word by word, but um, I used to have the book, I think it was called the Book of Sith. And I've glan I glanced through it when I had it, but I haven't. I didn't actually read through it properly. Um, it was like a gift when I was much younger. Um, and then I believe there is a scene 
or two uh, around uh, rebels where Mole uh, quotes the Sith Code. No, no, no. Sorry. In Clone Wars. Um, around the time where you know who. I'm trying not to spoil because I know that not everyone has watched or, you know, absorbed all Star Wars content. So it's more, I try to talk in more of a if you know, you know scenario. But there's a character in Clone Wars that he gets found and then he talks about stuff and he recites the Sith Code, uh, which was apparently, you know, the voice actor of that character's idea to do so because he's such a good super mega brain fan um, and I love him. Uh, it was such a cool idea. So I'm familiar with like the Sith code uh, in, ter in terms of that. So it's just cool to actually see it being like s the Jedi code being spoken from the from these guys. It's really neat. Good evening, Apprentice. I trust your training goes well. Good evening, Apprentice. <laughs> Can't you mean I require? <laughs> I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. May the Force be with you, Apprentice. It's so weird to just be like, ah oh, yes, it's a not Yoda. I want to know what the species is called, goddammit. Greetings, young Apprentice. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars, the fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith. There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. That's cool. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our order. The Jedi have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. We are as old as the Republic itself. Instead, I will begin 40 years ago with the War of Exar Kun. Like Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi and the Republic. Exar Kun was defeated, but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For 20 years, we struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars of the terrible conflict. That's so cool. Exar Kun was defeated, but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. So it was 40 years ago. So we've had Exar Kun be mentioned a couple of times already in this game, but I didn't know what it was really referring to, so that's really cool. So he was a Jedi who was also like, I'm a, I'm a be evil now. All things in time. You shall learn that history is an intricate weaving of many events. No one thing can be understood without the proper context. Twenty years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering small worlds on the Outer Rim. They were careful to choose only planets outside the Republic's jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. Well, you can hardly blame the Republic. The memory of war was fresh in everyone's mind. Nobody was eager to relive the horrors in a campaign against the Mandalorians. But in the end, it was unavoidable. The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. This is so cool. Ah, uh, the Jedi did not join in. The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, joined the Republic fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. 
Revan and Malak were heroes, the great saviors of the Republic. A third of the Republic fleet was under their direct command. And then something happened. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months, it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months. Scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Well. Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. <laughs> Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The Yuuzhan Vong. This massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. It seems impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. The source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers who had served under Revan. With each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us, lured by Sith promises of riches and power. That's how it goes. For two years, the Sith were all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle meditation allowed the Republic to win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan, as you probably know. She was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself, though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. Damn. Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. Huh. May the Force be with you. May the foes be with you. Greetings, young apprentice. As chronicler, you should ponder the history of Revan. This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble goal, but there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. You should ponder the history of Revan. Let me into the restricted section, God damn it! <laughs> All right. Your confidence is admirable, but you must guard against pride and arrogance. These lead to the dark side. Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. So cool. Like, talking with a Jedi chronicler who tells us about this, like, this history with Exar Kun and then all of the stuff that goes on with the Mandalorian Wars, and Revan and Malak, like, it's just so neat. It's good May stuff. The force be with you. We we eaten good on this Star Wars lore. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thought she'd have something to say. Um, all right, well, we can recite the Jedi code to him. There's a training computer here. Welcome, Chris Dracor. As one recently attempted for training, accepted for training here at the Academy, it is important you fully understand the many paths now available to you as a servant of the light. A slave? No! Anakin being freed from being a slave on Tatooine to joining a lovely space cult. <laughs> Jedi Guardians train for battle and physical prowess. In contrast, Jedi Consulars seek to master the awareness. Uh, sorry. Just making up words here. Um, <laughs> master the awesome power of the Force. Jedi Sentinels seek to find a balance between these two extremes. 
tell me more about the Jedi Guardian, Consular, and Sentinel. Are these just uh, a statistical comparison of all three classes? Okay, are these just like the ways that you can build your Jedi character? Jedi Guardians battle against the forces of evil and the dark side. They focus on combat training and masterful use of the lightsaber. Basic class attributes, 10 vitality, 4 force points, slow skill progression, fast feet progression. Uh, Jedi Consular bring balance to the universe. They focus less on physical combat and more on mental disciplines in order to augment their mastery of the force. 6 vitality, 8 force points, slow skill, slow feet. Jedi Sentinel. They ferret out deceit and injustice, bringing them to light. They strike a balance between physical and mental disciplines of the Jedi Order. 8 vitality, 6 force points, average skill progression, slow feet progression. Ooh, I kind of either want to be a Sentinel or a Guardian, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It looks... Sentinel looks pretty good, but it is, like... Um, this one has faster feet progression? Yeah, but slow skill progression. Yeah, I think I might go for the, if I, I mean, if we have to choose, I'm assuming we have to choose with our Jedi skills. I might go for Sentinel, I think. Cool. I, I'm, I guess I'll run around for a bit more and see if we've got any more NPC stuff uh, that we can talk to before we speak to Zar Leston and recite him the Jedi code and become a Padawan. Alright, I did the rounds. There's the Jedi that you can speak to out in the courtyard and she just reminds you of the Jedi code. So let's become a Padawan, speak to Master Zar. Greetings, my young pupil. Your progress has been most remarkable so far. Are you here to continue your training in the ways of the Jedi? I am. I am. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first you must prove yourself worthy in the traditions and customs of our Order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations. You must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. I am ready for the tests, Master Zar. These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from apprentice to Padawan and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must now prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the Code by completing these fundamental precepts of our Order. There is no emotion. Oh, interesting. Oh, it goes all the way down. Jesus. Um, there is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity, I think? There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. You have learned your studies well, Apprentice. It will not be long before you are a full member of our order. I'm a Jedi! You must pass the second test and learn about the most prized possession of a Jedi. The very symbol of our order, the lightsaber. The lightsaber is the traditional weapon of our order. It is a symbol of a Jedi's skill, dedication, and authority. And each lightsaber is as individual as the Jedi who wields it. The blade is made of pure energy, focused by polished crystals in the hilt. As the second test, each Jedi must construct his lightsaber with his own hands. And now it is your time. Speak with Master Dorak, and he will guide you through the choosing of a crystal. God, this is so fucking cool. Like, you know, like, I, I still, like, have the same, like, feelings that I mentioned at the beginning of the playthrough, where I really love, like, the scum and villainy aspect and, like, side of Star Wars. I love my bounty hunters. I love scoundrels. All of that kind of, like, nitty-gritty aspects of Star Wars. It's why I will always say, rest in peace, Star Wars 1313. Um, but I love that kind of side of Star Wars, but you cannot deny the feelings surrounding constructing your own lightsaber, you know? Like, it's it's such a cool concept, and, like, that's something that I find funny that I, I don't have in real life. I don't have my own lightsaber replica yet. There was one that I wanted to get, because genuinely my favorite lightsaber out of all of the characters uh, has to go to Luke Skywalker's green lightsaber. Like... That is just 
a perfect lightsaber to me. I love a green saber and I love his lightsaber hilt. So I was, I wanted to get my own replica of that with the whole light up blade and everything, but like they're sold out of Luke specifically. And there's like other characters that I really like their lightsabers. And I was thinking of those, but it's like, I think like when I want one, I wanted it to be his, but who knows, maybe I'll even end up making my custom one in this game and then I'll get my own lightsaber in real life. But that's one thing that I don't have uh, on under my belt as a Star Wars fan is I don't have my own replica light up lightsaber. I only have like those cheap ones where you like flick them and they extend out of the thing. <laughs> I only got, I've, I've got um, Anakin's, Darth Vader's and Darth Maul's version of, of those of those lightsabers. That's it, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, all right, let's speak to Dorak. Ah, you have come, young apprentice, at Master Zar's bidding. He sees great promise in you, as do I. The time has come for you to choose the color of your lightsaber. This color also reflects your demeanor and position within the Order. Interesting. So obviously, this is way before established canon with Clone Wars and the planet Ilum and how the lightsaber, you know, you go on your journey to get this, the color and it chooses you and you have your crystal. This is more of just like a, here is our display cabinet and you may choose the pretty jewels, Betty. You know, you can have, you can have all of the jewels you want. Um, what colors are there? Blue is the color of the Jedi Guardian. These Jedi battles against the forces of evil and the dark side. They focus more on combat training and use of the lightsaber. Yellow is the color of the Jedi Sentinel. This Jedi ferrets out deceit and injustice, bringing it to light. They focus less on combat and more on other skills and abilities. Green is the color of the Jedi Consular. This Jedi seeks to bring balance to the universe. They mediate between other groups, using their powers to end conflict and preserve peace. Damn, the lightsaber color is tied to the Jedi class, and I want it to be a sentinel. And that's a yellow blade, so Bastler is a Jedi sentinel. And then the other, my other choice was Jedi Guardian, which is blue. <laughs> no! If I want a green saber, I have to be the Consular, which is my third choice. Bring balance, they meditate between other groups using their powers to end conflict and preserve peace. The green lightsaber determines the choice. <laughs> this is the way. Oh man. A yellow lightsaber is really cool, but Bastler's already rocking one. I want to be unique. As much as I do love a yellow blade, I think I will go for my, I will do something out of my comfort zone in that case. And we will be a Jedi Consular, and we will use our powers to end conflict and preserve peace with a green lightsaber. Indeed. We shall see. I will now ask you questions, and your responses will indicate which class you lean most towards. A woman and her small child are beset by a desperate-looking group of thugs. They're menacing her with weapons, and she screams to you for help. What do you do? Ah, so they're also giving us a personality test to also decide. I'm kind of like kind of hoping that we'd just be able to get to choose a color, um, but that's okay. Um, attack the thugs, stop the thugs, and find out why they are attacking her. Hmm. Indeed. Very well. On to the next question. You are in combat with a dark Jedi allied with the Sith. There is a pause in the combat. What do you do? taunt him and then force push him off a cliff <laughs> try to see a weakness in his technique find out why he turned to the dark side and try to turn him attack him again interesting yes i suspected as much now for the next question there is a locked door and your goal lies on the other side what do you do I am beginning to see a pattern here, Apprentice. I have a feeling about what you would be best at. But first, the final question. You are the head of an enclave on a contested world. The Dark Jedi have infiltrated and are causing unrest across the planet. What do you do? Yes. 
Yes, I thought as much. As I suspected, you would be most suitable as a Jedi Sentinel. Which color and path do you believe yourself most suited to, Apprentice? God damn. So we're also suited to the path of the Jedi Sentinel. <laughs> ah. Oh, this is this is this is a hard one. I want green, but I also was like I'm going to I'll be a Jedi Sentinel anyway. And then our personality test is apparently that of a Jedi Sentinel. All right. I'll forsake my my love for the green and I will take a yellow blade. The path of the Jedi Sentinel. Let's let's do it. Here is a yellow crystal for your lightsaber. Go speak to Master Jar again, and he will instruct you in how to construct it. This is so cool, man. Um, let's have a look at... Oh, I'm leveling up. Um, okay, I'm meant to check my journal, but we are leveling up. So, let's do that. Uh, persuade, and... Oh, let's bump up that repair again. Uh, feats... Weapon proficiency with a lightsaber and Jedi defense. Uh, let's see if I can upgrade that one straight away, huh? Jedi sense, force immunity to fear. Defense. Yeah, give me that. Powers, okay. Crest Dracor needs <laughs> force cure. Um, and I think I'll go for... Let's do dark side powers. I think I'll go for force valor. Or oh, which one was it actually? Hang on. Direct force power attacks from Jedi opponents. Force aura. That's what I want. Nice. We have leveled up. All right. Dantooine, having completed the first trial, your second task to become a Jedi is to speak to Master Dorak and determine what sort of path uh, within the order you wish to follow. You have received your lightsaber crystal and become a Jedi Sentinel. You must return to Master Zar and complete your training and fulfill your destiny. Good evening, Apprentice. I trust your training goes well. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Cool. I see you insist on wandering the halls of our enclave when you should be busy studying your lessons. I'm fine. I suppose such desires are inevitable, though I fear you may seek knowledge for which you are not prepared. Yet I will do my best to guide your quest. Guide your quest. Yeah, I want, I want some, uh, I want some questions from these guys before I complete my Jedi training. Sorry, I want some answers from these guys when I ask them questions. Bastilla, the young Jedi holds great promise and great danger. She can do much for both the Republic and the Council. Without her skill in battle meditation, the Sith Armada would have conquered the galaxy long ago. But despite her command of the Force, Bastilla is still young. She is a Jedi, but she has not attained the rank of Master. The Council would do well to remember this before we lay the fate of the galaxy on her slender shoulders. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. Interesting. We grant Bastila the rank of commander. She has a seat on this, on this council as a commander, but we do not grant her the rank of master. I see you insist on... I suppose... Revan was once a promising Padawan. But ever eager to learn more about the Force, Revan sought knowledge of ancient Sith magics, foolishly ignoring the dangerous lure of the dark side. When the Mandalorian invasion came, Revan seized the opportunity it presented. Many Jedi flocked to the Outer Rim to follow the charismatic young knight, and many fell under the sway of the dark side. Damn. I do not believe Revan and Malak were corrupted on the Outer Rim. They had begun their journey down the Dark Path long before the Mandalorian threat appeared. Here on Dantooine, they discovered a sinister cave, a place where the strength of the Dark Side overwhelms the light. Perhaps this discovery was what first corrupted them. Or perhaps they sought the cave out because they were already corrupted. Whatever the explanation, the Order was unable to turn them back to the light. 
Had the Council taken more decisive action in this matter, perhaps Revan and Malak could have been stopped. But in this we failed. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. Okay. I see you so I keep having to I... re-enter to get some more information from him. If you find me overly critical, perhaps it is because you do not fully understand what is at stake. For 15,000 years, the Republic has brought peace and stability to the galaxy. Now the Republic may be destroyed because we, the Jedi, have failed them. Revan and Malak were paragons of the ideals the Order seeks to uphold. Yet they succumbed to the temptations of the dark side. When Revan fell, Malak took up the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith. Should Malak be stopped, what is to stop another Jedi from taking his place? This is the burden we Masters must carry. Only through strict training and relentless lessons can we prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. That is why the Order can brook no failure in our apprentices and pupils. That is why I can accept nothing but perfection from you. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. What did he just say about the dark master being reborn? What? We are what grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. That's one of my favorite quotes in Star Wars and one of my favorite moments in Star Wars, despite where it is placed in the timeline. <laughs> but that moment between Yoda and Luke uh, and, and Yoda talking to, to Luke about being a master is one of the most beautiful moments in Star Wars for sure. But I need to get this I dialogue again because this is I this see. made me tilt my head a bit. Hold on a second. If you find me now, the Republic may be destroyed. When Revan fell, Malak took up the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith. Should Malak be stopped, what is to stop another Jedi from taking his place? Only through strict training and relentless lessons can we prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. What is that? that? Is why you would do well. Prevent the Dark Master from being reborn? I'm sorry, did I miss a chapter? You guys not telling me something? What? Are we preventing something from being reborn? You guys know something. That's really strange. Is that... Is that a bit out of left field? We haven't been told something about that, have we? Oh well. Good evening, Apprentice. Good evening! I'd like to ask you some questions. This camera angle is so fucking stupid. A Jedi must ever be seeking knowledge. Bastila will be a great Jedi someday. Even among the Masters and the Council, it is rare to find one so skilled in the art of battle meditation. Bastila was there when Revan was slain. Did you know that? Yes, I saw it in a vision. Why did what? No, I saw it in a vision. Bastila herself does not like to talk about it. She was accompanying the strike team that confronted Revan when the Dark Lord was destroyed. Her role in the death of such a promising young Jedi as Revan upset her greatly. But Bastila knew she had to set her personal feelings aside for the sake of the galaxy and the Republic. The Force is strong with her now. And without her skill in battle meditation, we would have lost this war long ago. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. And for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Is there anything else you would like to know? Yes. So I can... He asks me another question, but Vrook is just like, here's your one question. Go away. I knew Revan as a promising young pupil. Revan was strong in the Force, but also headstrong and proud. Such traits are not unusual in a Padawan. Perhaps that was why I did not see the true extent of the danger. Many of the young Jedi admired Revan, including Malak. When Revan set off to challenge the Mandalorians, Malak was the first to join the cause. And they beat my people so easily in battle. And when Revan fell to the dark side, it was inevitable Malak would fall as well. Dude, I didn't expect Candrus to just chime in. That's sick. Vandar, um, Vandar described Revan in like the same way that Vrook like described us, when he's just like, you are, 
You are, like, what is it? Like, strong and powerful, very headstrong, like, sort of, like, description. Just all Padawans are headstrong, apparently. It seems to be very common. <laughs> all Padawans are very, like, let's, let's fucking do this shit. <laughs> and then their master has to be like, chill out, please. Revan was always the leader, the more powerful of the pair. When Revan fell, we had hoped the Sith threat was ended. But Malak quickly assumed Revan's role, and has embraced the dark side power as fully as his old master ever did. Now, Malak leads the Sith Armada against the Republic. Hate and vengeance for his master's death draw Malak ever further down the path of the dark side, fueling his powers until they surpass those of his old master. Only you and Bastila together can stop Malak now. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. Is there anything else you would like to know? God, this, this, like, this lore that we're getting and all this dialogue from the Jedi Council is so cool. This is just, this is the good exposition. I'm loving getting all of this, like, backstory filled in. Master Vruk may seem harsh and Vruk. But he understands the dangers that lie in your path. Master Vruk. He wants you and Bastila to be fully prepared when you finally face Lord Malak. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. Is there anything else you would like to know? No, we're okay. Very well. May the Force be with you. Okay, and then we've spoken to Dorak about his stuff. I see you in... I suppose... If you find me, now the Republic may be destroyed because When Revan fell, Malak took up the mantle of Dark Lord of... Only through strict training and relentless lessons can we prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. That is why the Order can brook no failure in our apprentices and pupils. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. That's such an out-of-place line. No one else talks about that. Who's getting reborn? Like, what is that? Like, that's such a strip. Doesn't that seem like an important thing and only he's mentioning it? Like, what is he referring to? We must prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. Ah, good. Now that you have selected your crystal, we shall begin the construction of your lightsaber. Somehow, Palpatine returned! That's what he's referring to. <laughs> Palpatine time-traveled back to the events of uh, the Old Republic to be a villain thousands of years before. He's like, aha, there's no Skywalkers back from this far in the galaxy. <laughs> But then Bendak Starkiller comes back from the dead instead and kills him. This is our lightsaber. How cool is that? Yellow crystal. Can we change the color over time? We can change... There's a, there's a thing to select a crystal. If we can get a green one, I'll be very happy. So we have power crystals as well. Traditionally associated with the Jedi, the lightsaber is a devastating weapon difficult to master. Properties can vary with the type of focusing crystal used in construction. It's a very basic looking lightsaber, but it's mine. And it's yellow. Assemble! I have a lightsaber! <laughs> Actually so sick. You have done extremely well in constructing your lightsaber, Apprentice. Your crystal seems to have been set perfectly. It is rare indeed for that to happen the first time one constructs their lightsaber. These crystals are very rare, found only in certain caves strong in the Force. By adding crystals to your lightsaber, you can alter or enhance its properties. There have even been unconfirmed rumors of certain Force-sensitive caves here on Dantooine that may hold these crystals. Dude. Okay. That's awesome. Certain Force-sensitive caves here in Dantooine that may hold these crystals. That's very much like Ilum. That's awesome. It is a rumor only. I do not know if there's any truth in it. Let's but go you searching. Must learn first to use your lightsaber and take care when drawing it. Your lightsaber identifies you as a member of the Jedi Order. With such recognition comes honor and respect and the attentions of dangerous enemies. <laughs> the Sith and Dark Jedi will seek to destroy you, Apprentice. And you must prove yourself worthy in battle against a foe who also wields a lightsaber. Are you ready to face the final challenge, Apprentice? This is so sick. Yeah. 
For every Jedi, the threat of the dark side is always present. You must truly understand this before you are accepted into the Order. You must see the corruption of the dark side for yourself. Even here on Dantooine, there are places where the dark side holds sway, twisting and tainting nature itself. The ancient grove, once used for deep meditation by the Jedi, is now tainted. A wave of darkness perverts the region around it. The Cath Hounds in the area have become savage and ruthless. They have become a threat to the settlers, a threat the Jedi have promised to stop. The lightsaber cave, the the lightsaber crystal caves of Ilum, and the da the darkness cave from Dagobah, all on one planet. <laughs> God damn! Uh, what would you have me do, Master Zar? I want to go lightsaber crystal hunting so I can find a green one. <laughs> the cath hounds are but a symptom of the true problem. You must journey into the grove and confront the true source of the darkness. That is your task. Constructing our lightsaber was almost done like so unceremoniously. You know, I was I was wondering if there would be like a cutscene or like a thing where you know, like you have like that cool vision of like seeing the four the like the lightsaber being assembled with the force and you're just like putting it together or like something like that but you just go to a workbench and it's just like wow here it is um i would have loved like a cool like lightsaber building cutscene that would have been sick i can say no more some things you must see for yourself none of the other jedi at the academy are permitted to help you in this task but remember this my young apprentice a Jedi acts with patience and care, and those on the dark path are not always lost forever. The dark side still taints the ancient grove. Your lessons cannot continue until the spreading corruption of the dark side has been stopped. This is your task, apprentice. May the Force be with you. Cool bananas. Jedi Trials, you must cleanse a meditation grove to the southeast of the dark taint that has been infesting it. The exact nature of the cause of the taint has not yet been made clear. Okay. I have a lightsaber. Candrus. I have a lightsaber. Zalbar. See this? Lightsaber. I'm cool. I have my Jedi. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, I'll see if... I don't know when dialogue updates, so I'm just like, I have a lightsaber now, will you talk to me? I'm in the next stage of my training. I see you insist on... It appears that soon you will achieve the rank of Padawan. Okay, I think it might just be the same at this point. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. Hey, but we have matching lightsabers now. Except she's got a double-bladed one, she's cooler than me. Can we two-hand lightsabers as well? Can we get like a second lightsaber? And chuck it on that side. I can have a lightsaber and a vibro blade. So maybe you can dual wield lightsabers. That would be awesome. Uh, I guess we're going out this way. We have not yet been out there before. So I guess that's it for our Jedi trials. We'll take Candorus and Zalbar with us and we'll go and explore. Hello, Jedi droid. The council has decreed you may come and go as you please. Ah. To the courtyard. Oh yeah, I think I can level up my, my guys. Yes, I can level up my guys. Um, remaining points three. Give you a repair skill and an awareness skill. Feats, uncanny dodge. Nice. Um, Flurry, conditioning, implant, power attack. I might give you. Is the is the bowcaster a rifle or a heavy weapon? Heavy weapons such as repeating blasters. I'm willing to bet that it's a blaster rifle. I'm gonna give him that, without any knowledge that it's actually correct. <laughs> Uh, let's see. The bowcaster is a rifle. See, I know what I'm doing. Uh, an attribute increase. Uh, let's give you a strength increase. And... Treat injury, repair, demolitions. Implant level 3, baby. Alright, Candorous. Let's give you a... Let's also give you a strength level up. 
and treat injury. Feats. Uh, he's got a repeating blaster, which is the heavy weapons one that's already maxed out. And give him master toughness. There you go. Tough boy. Tough Mandalorian warrior. Perfect. Huh? Sure. Huh? Whoa, that is a literal floating stingray. Oh my god, look at it go. <laughs> that is literally... I wish we could tilt the camera up. That's like kind of something that's like bugging me. Is you only have like a... You only have horizontal camera turning. That is literally a flying stingray. Amazing. The council's been telling like us a manta ray. near the stones mm. to the east. Just as well, the calf hounds near there seem a lot more vicious. Master Quattro was hurt very badly. She might die. I heard it was her own apprentice that did it. Oh shit. Wow. This is a beautiful planet. I haven't seen Dantooine before. All I know about Dantooine is from A New Hope. Which is just like... Uh, the remains of an old rebel base. So there's a whole, whole goddamn Jedi thing going on here. Which is awesome. Come on, let me talk to Nemo. It is good sometimes to stop and reflect on the beauty of nature and the Force. I am sorry. I tend to get carried away. I do not believe we have met, Apprentice. My name is Nemo. Is there something I can help you with? Indeed. Indeed. What is it you would like from me? What do you know of the Tainted Grove? The Council has told you nothing of the Grove? No, they have not. Then it would not be my place to explain its significance. But as the light side can be embodied in living beings, so can the dark. The Grove can be found to the south and east in the plains. But be wary of Cathounds. They may be agitated by the power in the Grove. Is there something else I can help you with? Damn. Very well. What is it you wish to know? We're gonna find a store. Ah, you can find two stores here at the Enclave. Aerotech has opened both a general supply store and a droid facility, and I think you will find their products quite good. The supply store is run by a Twi'lek named Kratis Yurkel. The droid repair facility is managed by Carol Carr. Is there something else I can help you with? Cool. Um, we have got in there already. Um, so this is going to be another situation. New planet, all these new NPCs, and I guess so many of the same NPCs will obviously have information that's leading to us to our current objective. It seems like that was the same on Taris, where it's like we get a lot of our characters like talking to us being like, Oh boy, those caves, they do be dark, you know. <laughs> about me? I am truly flattered. Candorous looking like he's about to, to backstab know? this dude. <laughs> just standing behind him. Just just say the word and I'll do it. <laughs> As I have said, I believe, my name is Nemo. I am here by the will of the Jedi Council. Indeed, my young friend, that I am. I have served the Council for many years and have seen many apprentices pass through this enclave. I think perhaps you place an undue importance on rank and hierarchy. Understandable, but regrettable also. We each serve in our place, high or low. Is there something else I can help you with? I hope your time is well spent here on Dantooine. That's so sick. All right, Nemo. Jedi Master Nemo holds up quite well. Like this is a game from 2003. I think the lighting is very good in this game as well, especially when you get to like moments like this. I mean, it's very it's very bare bones and basic, but it still it conveys that that sense of wonder, which I think is is quite beautiful. I heard that the Sith have destroyed Tarus. This bodes ill for us. Gar. Greetings, friend. I think I can safely assume you are a member of the Jedi Order. Has the Council agreed to hear our petition? Are you at all related to that guy behind me, Nemo? You look awfully familiar. Oh, I'm sorry. I was mistaken. Does the Council require our presence? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. Leave me alone. Oh, I see. <laughs> I am mistaken. How may I be of assistance? 
Yeah, exactly. Help me out. My name is Gar. Me and my fine wife, Rilke, here... A pleasure. ...live on one of the northern farms. But the cat hounds and the Mandalorian problem has been getting really bad of late, and we're here to ask the Jedi Council to help. Interesting. The Mandalorian problem. Probably not a good idea to bring Can... Well, actually, it could be a good idea to bring Candorus along, but if we have to fight and kill other Mandalorians, I expect that he might... Be like, ah, can we not do that? He might hate us for that. Or, by bringing him along, he can help to come to a peaceful negotiation, potentially. Recently, the cat hounds have been acting much more aggressively. They've even attacked some of the settlers. Those Mandalorian raiders have been milking the outlying farms dry, too. I hear John got hit really bad. Too bad about his daughter. He should have been protecting her better if he wanted to keep her. Mandalorian beast. Some of us don't like fighting and killing and butchering as much as you. I'm not sure exactly what the Council will do about it, but we need some help with this. I only hope they'll listen to me. Is there anything else you require? Mandalorian beast? Man, bringing along Candorus on this planet has been very interesting, because obviously with everything so tied into the Mandalorian war, and there being like Mandalorian raiders and like problems with the Mandalorians still having one in our party makes for a very interesting perspective on the matter. So I'm almost like that's why I'm kind of tempted to just keep him in my party. Um, it's very yeah like it almost makes me want to replace Zalbar with maybe Karth because I don't know if Zalbar is going to say much throughout this mission, but I also mission but I do want um, to get to know Zalbar more I want him to open up to me so that's kind of why I want to keep him with me this is the this is the struggles of RPGs with so many player characters that have own unique personalities and all of that kind of stuff to d get into you know ever since the Republic beat them years ago little groups have been roaming all over the place they're pathetic they're taking scraps when they should be taking worlds with the Sith invasion, the Republic doesn't have the manpower to hunt them down. The Jedi are even worse off because Malak has been hunting them specifically. They're worried that he might even be supporting these raiders. So, I don't want to face them directly. That puts us in a kind of hard situation. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. Well, as you can see, Dantooine is mostly plains and grassland, but it has a nice hearty soil. A lot of new people have come in the last generation or so. Well, well, the ones you'll most likely hear about are the Sandrals and the Matalis. Big, wealthy landowners, both of them. But Alan Matali and Nurik Sandral just can't seem to get along. And now Alan wants to get the council to do something. Oh. Alan's that dude in that room that we spoke to last episode that was like, Get away from me, I'm just here to speak to the council. Well, from what I hear, it started about a week ago. See. Nurik's son, Cassis, is an archaeologist. Bright lad, too, but he disappeared. Nurik, of course, blamed Alan, but even he didn't take it before the council. But now, Alan's son, Shen, has disappeared as well. And no one knows where he's gone. Alan blames Nurik. He thinks he's kidnapped his son. I don't know exactly what he wants to ask the council, but from what I know of Alan, he's probably going to be after blood. Is there anything else you require? Interesting. Well, I guess we'll keep that in mind because it seems like we might have a little side quest on our hands in regards to that. Farewell, then. May the Force be with you. Is that how it goes? Yeah. May the Force be with you. Okay, let's have a look at that journal entry. Mandalorian Raiders. Dantooine. You have heard that bands of Mandalorian Raiders have been harassing the settlers on Dantooine. Um, okay, interesting. All right. Hello. I'm afraid I'm not very good at explaining things. If you have any questions, please ask my husband. Please ask me, husband. Oh, this is John. How long can you people continue to sit by and claim you protect us? Protectors. Ha! You sit in your enclave safe from the Mandalorians while we suffer. Bruh, I just got here. <laughs> I just got here, dude. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I've been here for weeks, haven't I? <laughs> uh, yes. I'm a, I am a Jedi expert, ha-ha. Those Mandalorian brutes have killed my daughter. You should have protected her better, and you call yourself her father. And what am I supposed to do against a dozen Mandalorians and Duros? 
Nothing. There was nothing I could do. They came to our land demanding our livelihood. But Ilsa, my Ilsa, said no. Interesting. There was nothing I could do. Too many of the Mandalorians and their Duro's allies. I've come here to ask you, please, Master Jedi, stop these raiders and get revenge for my daughter. Ah, yes. Master Jedi. <laughs> but you have been accepted into the Order. Yours is the authority of the Jedi. I will give you all I have. Just please, annihilate them from the face of this planet. Good name. Um... Mandalorian Raiders, John has told you of the attacks by the Raiders that killed his daughter. He has begged you to find them and destroy them. If they are destroyed, then they won't bother the settlers anymore, but it could be dangerous. Interesting. I love how story-focused this episode has been so far, where it's just been a very big, like, you know, like, building up the world of Dantooine and the Jedi Order and having, like, this training and, like, soaking all of this kind of stuff in. I think that's really necessary in, in stories like this to have those moments of calm where it's not all just, like, gameplay and combat and really engaging stuff all the time where, like, moments to breathe is really important in a story. And I like that that can translate in these episodes as well as we document this playthrough is it's good just to be able to, like, just have something that's we're just absorbing, you know, dialogue related to... To Dan Tween, and I just think that's very neat to learn about this place before we start getting into all of the, the side quests and stuff. The council's been telling us not to go near the stones to the east. I fear it is only a matter of time before the Sith find us here, too. Malik just rocks up, rocks up and bombs this place as well. <laughs> Alright, um, let's have a look. Let's see which way we go. What is that over there? Oh my god, we got speeders. <sighs> I, sh I have a speeder, right? Oh, yeah, I have a speeder on the Ebon Hawk, but I think that's specifically tied to if I want to do, like, races or something. Adam Larp. What is that over there? Look at that thing. Uchiha Pinky. Uchiha Pinky. Greetings, fellow sentient. I notice that you are not heavily armed, or at least not heavily armed enough. Please allow myself to introduce myself. I am Adam, a simple merchant with a much noble purpose. Purpose. Yes, purpose. The settlers and noble humans of Dantooine have been plagued by cath hounds, raiders, and other fearsome troubles of late. It is much, much too sad to see these things happen to such people as this. Therefore, I have made this my mission to be. Uh, mission? To overcome their troubles, they must be able to defend themselves. Therefore, I shall offer the highest of quality of weapons at the lowest of low of prices for them. I am here offering you much in the way of weaponry at low, low prices. How can any sentient pass up such a bargain? They cannot. Uchiha Penki. Weaponry it is, and weaponry I have. What is it you would like from me this fine day? What are you selling? Here's the best you can find anywhere in the world. Excuse me? Do you see that last name? Do you see that fucking last name? The armor of Cassus Fett, the most wanted man in known space. Famous for killing the captain of a flagship Republic frigate at the Battle of Jugs Cluster, he is presumed dead. Bruh, do the Fets go back thousands and thousands of years, or what? You can't use a last name like that and it not be intentional. Cassus Fett. Holy shit. 15,000 credits for a 10 bonus. No dexterity, but damage resistance versus cold fire and sonic. Hmm. Alright, we've got a war suit. After the Great Hyperspace War a thousand years ago, the heirs of Empress uh, Tata militarized their world and industry, a legacy that produced battle armor still sought after today. Bronzium Light Battle Armor. This molded armor is made of better materials than standard military issue, but is still relatively cheap and easy to mass produce, making it ideal for light militias and the like. Interesting. Anything else? We got the flamethrower for the droid. Man, if only I was rich, I'd be wearing Fett's armor right now. I wish we could do like a preview so I could see what it looks like. Alright, who's this person over here? Elise! Greetings, young Jedi. I wonder if you could assist me. I seem to have lost my companion, you see? Your companion? 
We were working on my farm to the north of here. I was working in the garden outside, and he was working inside. I heard the door to the house open, but not close. I went to see and found it wide open. I searched everywhere and could not find him. I worry so much. I need him back so badly. I wonder if he... Could he have been kidnapped? Cathounds are not intelligent enough to open doors. Although they have been more vicious lately. No. It must have been someone who could open the door by himself. Come to think of it, the door was locked. Oh, wow. No. The door was undamaged and showed no signs of tampering. Well, yes, it could have, but he had no reason to run away. His programming... <laughs> Your missing companion is a droid? Well, yes, uh, he is a droid, but he is very valuable to me all the same. He's the last piece of my poor, passed-away husband that I have left. He is very dear to me, my precious is. I don't know what I'd do without him. He's the only companionship I have on all of Dantooine. My precious. He is a personal assistance droid. My husband was a genius at constructing droids. He made this one capable of taking care of me for the rest of my life. As the last legacy of my husband, for my own personal ease of mind, I need him back. His absence gnaws at me like a gaping wound. Please, I beg of you, return my droid to me. This is a euphemism for something. <laughs> Let's get Elisa's sex droid back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Master Jedi. If you find him, please send him home to me. I need him so much. There ain't no touch like the touch of a droid built to you, built for you by your husband. Missing companion, you've met Elise, who has lost her companion, her droid companion. It is all she has left of her late husband and she wishes you to find him. He was apparently kidnapped from her home and she has been searching for him ever since. She misses him very much. Alright, I guess we should keep our eyes out for a droid as well. What is that thing up there? Oh god. Oh, this is the Cath Hounds. All right. That would that would make sense. These are the Cath Hounds. Yep. Prepare to get lightsabered, boy. Keep going. You got this. I need a I need a Chris Drake or to unlock um Flurry at this point, I think. That would probably be nice. So sick. Alright. Horn Cathound. Alright, we're just now in the open world. Let's go. I'm wondering how, if I'm able to just handle these encounters, like, just normally, but... Yeah. See how we go. Press Drake or no! Oh, I can't use Force Aura? Oops. Oh, restricted by armor. Oh shit. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, um, in terms of my armor, so, am I still in combat? Technically we're still in combat, okay. What? Nice. Okay, I think we're out of combat now. Oh, we gotta wait. Okay. So I have to put on clothing. So my default outfit, and now I can use... I can now use Force Aura. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, restricted by armor, 
Jedi temporarily granted a plus two to bonus to defense and all saving throws. Uh, yeah, but is that worth forsaking my armor that just gives me <laughs> the defense bonus? Yeah, I don't know. Being a Jedi is hard, man. You're gonna wear robes. What happened to Jedi wearing armor? It's possible. It's a thing. It's a thing. Sure. I also need to, when I level up, I'm definitely going to try and unlock the flurry skill. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Jedi. He's already dead. <laughs> we barely knew him. Chris Dracula, already dead. He's a he's a great Jedi. Wake up, Chris. Now, something we can do here, which is really nice, uh, a great a great tip that has been pointed out to me, is we can do our little fast travel in the map, so we can go back to the Ebon Hawk, and it res fully restores our health, which is very nice, and then we can we can transit back. So, something that I'm learning is to really utilize um, really utilize sort of med packs and antidotes and stuff like that within combat they're very they're very like combat focused items to use but then outside of that you really have like a lot more you know freedom in what you can you know choose to to engage in you know what I mean so very handy and it will save a lot of uh, a lot of time a lot of pain and suffering I think. So, I'm very happy about that. It's my favorite thing about lightsabers in video games. Oh, Candorus really just going after him. <laughs> Candorus is like, for, for Mandalore! For the glory of combat! My favorite thing about video game lightsabers is they, they quite, uh, they fail to really capture the lethality of a lightsaber sometimes outside of, uh, cutscenes, because it's always like, you can smack the thing multiple times <laughs> until something happens. God, it's quite open here, isn't it? We've got a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of options in which directions we can choose. What is this? This looks quite special. Oh shit, is this the... This is the door. These are the strange ruins. Oh shit. Uh, I don't think we want to be here yet. Yeah, I recognize that door from the vision. Okay, so we know where the strange ruins are. I think... I was assuming we'd, we'd come here with Bastila, so we'll probably do that. Very interesting, though. We're just mapping out our environment. Where does this go? Aha! Uh -huh, to the Metale Grounds. So that dude is currently at the... Just around the corner from the Jedi Council. Hey, new music! The music is so good in this game as well, by the way. The variations on the Cath Hounds is actually quite cool as well. Candorus just picking all the fights possible, dude. Okay, there's just carth hounds everywhere. I guess we will run around and explore the open fields. 
um, until we find our places of interest where we can actually further some quest lines. Right, we've got another establishment. What is this? A door, wow. Ah, Metalli pass card required to enter. Is that so? What if we tried cutting the door down? Got a Metalli droid. This is private property. <laughs> By what authority are you trespassing on this estate? My weapons, my friend. Leave immediately. Only those on official family business are permitted within the estate. Okay. Oh, we're not allowed in then. Interesting. Alright, I guess we'll have to play around with, uh, play around with that side quest and do something about it. Oh, this is quite cool. So we've got, down, we've got the path south to head down and then it looks like there is more over this way. So if we head down, if we head back to the Jedi Council Chambers, we might be able to speak to that dude and maybe he'll have something to say. But we should also speak to... Ooh, hello. I think we've found our... our Duros pals. You've been holding out on us again. Since you haven't given us enough money, I guess we're gonna have to take it out of you piece by piece. No! Please! Take my wife and children instead! Anything! Scumbag! Dude, the Mandalorian armor? The Mandalorian armor, huh? Let's go. Let's let's engage in beautiful combat against a Mandalorian. For Mandalore! Let's go! I'm a Mandalorian Jedi. Absolutely terrible decisions to go into combat with him. You always need to stop kicking me, dude. I don't wear a Mandalorian helmet in the game, so I have to wear it. In real life. He fucking abandoned combat! <laughs> I win! I'm victorious in the name of Mandalore. He ran away from me to go and fight Candorus. That's so funny. So Candorus doesn't have anything to say about... Uh, he has no... No problem with gunning down Mandalorians. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want? From what we saw from space, this world doesn't have a lot of people. I couldn't really have found much work here anyway, so I never had an interest. It looks like a farm world. The Republic has thousands of these places. Ones that get by farming crops and hunting herds of native beasts. But I might have underestimated this place. It seems to be more than I thought. You have anything else you want to ask? No, yeah, fine. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. So a Mandalorian Raider and a bunch of Duros. Farming, really? Man of your talents. Cool, we got some cool speeders though. Ah, uh, well, I mean, we've dealt with some raiders and some a Duros. Ah, uh, sorry, some Duros and a raider. The other way around. Um, he murdered a dude. He's like straight up in his moment of like when he's about to get killed. He's just like, please take my wife and child instead. Like, you scumbag. Uh, so we've got another path south and north on this side as well. Ah, oh, to the grove! Oh, this is the Tainted Grove. This is where we're supposed to be going then. Alright, hold on. If this is the Tainted Grove... Um... I will check out our other options first. Now, like... With the, you know, with the hit, what happened with Taris and the fact that the uh, Sith fleet just bombed and destroyed the whole place, it, like, makes me gravely concerned that we've, like, potentially left, like, a trail for them to follow us here. Because what if they just decide to do the same? Over here. 
Oh, okay, that takes us back to the courtyard. I see. Strange ruins, path south. Oh, okay, cool. That's uh, that's much smaller than I thought, so that's good. Cool. Um, I might head over to before we do the ruins. I'll head. I'll take this path south over this side down. But yeah, I think we'll probably have to have a chat to that dude in the Jedi next to the Jedi Council Chambers about potentially getting a pass card to get into that estate. That'll be interesting. Blaster carbine. I really want to get some uh, to blast a rifle. I really want to get some Mandalorian armor like that. I'd love to see if we could actually like wear it. It'd be sick. Oh, this okay. So both of the south paths go to the grove, but on different sides of it. So okay, two sides of the same grove. Wonderful. Where we just fight a bunch of these cat hounds. Just use your fancy abilities, guys. You're fine. You'll be fine, I promise. It's so nice to actually have Crest Draco surviving. <laughs> All it took was getting a lightsaber. All it took was a lightsaber. Oh god, hang on. I want to get outnumbered. Huh? Cool. Oh, there's someone here. Okay. Is this... Ancient Grove? Oh, I guess this is it. This is our ancient, tainted grove. Right, there's someone there. So, we I will wait. Hold on. I will explore the rest. Oh, there's some more Mandalorian Raiders. Okay. So, what we can do here... Is we return to the Evan Hawk. <laughs> I'll get healed. And we'll transit back. That is such a that is such a great thing to be able to do. That's good. Just to make sure you can prepare yourself for a fight against the Mandalorian Raiders. You got this. You got this, bud. Let's go. Nice work. Right, sure. Let's try and not alert all of those cath hounds over there and attack these guys instead. Okay, Mandalorian, Juros Warrior, Juros Warrior, Mandalorian. Oh, he's activating energy shield. I'll fight you. Let's go. Yeah, your other friends haven't even noticed. That's what you get for being foolish and trying to take me one on one. I'm a Jedi now! And I almost died too. Oh shit. I might actually die. <laughs> I was like, I was literally running away so I could heal. Nah, that's a shame. Alright. A Jedi has fallen. He is one with the Force now. Go get him. Get him, Zalba. Huh? How accurate are you with that repeating blaster? I think you need to get closer, too. Get in there. Yeah. That's better. Damn, those energy shields just getting absolutely blasted before I have the chance to do anything. Oh well. Get him! Nice. That's victory. Well, I mean, we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with the Mandalorian and the 
and the Juras. Oops, hold on. Uh, we, we, I mean, we're dealing with the problem. They're attacking us first, and we're just protecting ourselves. <laughs> a Mandalorian data pad. There you go. Let's have a look at that. Um, that's a. Is it a quest item? Yes. Jarg, did you remember not to take the XT model bike out today? There was something funny with one of the intakes and I thought it could jam. Ha! Huh. Consider yourself lucky. If someone was dumb enough to take that thing out, he would have plowed right into the ground within a kilometer. Interesting. Okay. It is a quest item though. The Sandral Grounds. Alright, give me a second. Because I'm going to do the thing again. Where I return to the Ebon Hawk and heal myself. Um... Interesting. So we've got a couple of side quests to to keep in mind. We've got like that that Twi'lek at the front who's like wanting us to keep uh, keep our eyes and ears open for someone. We've got to take care of all the Mandalorian raiders and the Juris warriors so we can bring peace to this whole place. <laughs> um, Mandalorian raiders. We've got another data pad. Jarg went missing in Sector B, then Reza saw someone moving south of there. Take a couple troops and find out who it is. If they look suspicious, terminate. Okay. This is that whole... Oh. I guess maybe we go around this side to get to the other part of the grove. And I gotta fight some Karth Hounds to do so. I regret getting Force Aura now because I'll be wearing armor. <laughs> Looks like I should have uh, probably looked into doing another ability instead. But that's okay, we live and we learn. I think it'd be nice if I could have everyone pull back. Oh god, I got stuck. I'd love to be able to, like, command everybody to pull out. But they. They always, they always tend to stay, because what I want to be able to do is from a distance throw a grenade. There we go. I want to be able to throw a grenade. When those guys stand still. Oh, well... Okay. They were running towards me anyway. So that was kind of pointless. <laughs> that was pointless. The uh, the Cathounds don't really drop anything either. Oh, who's this? Baluk. A chuta. Wonga could be a chuta. Apprentice, your arrival here is well timed. This is a Jedi. Hello. Who are you? You're wearing Jedi robes. Well, Jedi outfit. I am Baluk, a Jedi from the Enclave. I was sent by the Jedi Council to investigate a killing that took place here a few hours ago. Communication does not pose a problem, as both the suspects and I speak basic and Hatties. I was going to handle this case myself, but now that you are here, this could be an excellent opportunity for you to demonstrate how well you have been learning your lessons at the Academy. Though you are not yet a full Jedi, perhaps you could assist me in sorting out the truth from the lies. I love how he's like, I can speak Hutties and basic, but for the sake of uh, this game, we probably didn't have another voice actor that could voice my lines, so we put him through the garbage alien generator. Ichuta! <laughs> Words that are like we've heard in Star Wars that we know mean different things, and it's just like, this guy says, hello, and he goes, Bantha Poodoo! <laughs> It's it's charming. It's it's it, you know it's something of the age. It's a technological limitation and also a way for them to circumvent having to have so much dialogue in an alien language. I totally get it. It's fine. It's just from a fourth wall perspective, quite entertaining. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Listen to the stories given by the two suspects. I've brought an information retrieval droid with access to the archives both at the Jedi Enclave and the planetary capital. I will use my wisdom and experience to offer you some guidance, but I will not solve the case for you. There is little benefit if you do not solve this problem yourself. Consider each man's account and check the facts with the information droid. Once you have gathered all the evidence you think you need, run through the possible scenario with me. If you are unable to come to a satisfactory resolution, then I will take these men to the Enclave and deal with this myself. 
According to the accounts of the participants, these three men were out here in the field together earlier before the clouds broke. I find that very odd, for most people would seek shelter indoors when the sky is filled with dark storm clouds as it was earlier today, but that is not the most puzzling aspect of the case. The dead man, Kolder Netik, was shot in the back with a blaster rifle. A rifle was found lying near his body with bloodstains on it and has been sent back to the Enclave for analysis. Two other men were found at the scene when I arrived. One was Handon Gould. He was unarmed. The other was Rickard Lusoff, who was carrying a hunting laser. Both men say that they did not do anything and that they came across the body, but both also accuse the other. Obviously there is more to this than what we have been told. Interesting. Is there anything else I should know? There is one last thing. When I arrived, Handon was holding his side and Rickard was favoring one of his legs. You would do well to remember this as we progress through the case. If there is anything else you need, I'll remain here while you question the witnesses. Oh my god, we're doing Star Wars Detective now. It's Jedi Detective time. Alright, I'm going to save uh, in the Jedi Detective segment. So, uh, Handon was holding his side and the other one was holding his leg. And then where's the body? Where's that body at? Here. The body of Caldenetic. He was apparently shot from behind with a blaster. Interesting. Okay. And there's a droid here. An information droid. Greetings, Apprentice. You must be the one Master Baluk has enlisted to help him with this problem. I am an information retrieval droid. I can assist you by accessing the records of both the Jedi and Clay from the central government facilities here in Dantooine. If you have any need of my services, please do not hesitate to talk to me. I have already retrieved some information from the archives on Goldenetic, Rickard Lusoff, and Handan Gould. I have also had time to examine the body of Mr. Netic. Is there any information you require? This is actually so cool. The the side quests in uh, in Knights of the Old Republic are just like they're fun. Like, there's a, there's a lot of variety of things that you can do that you can just totally skip over if you want to pursue with, like, just the main mission only. But, like, there's, it's very engaging and it feels very, like, fleshed out and lived in. Especially for, a, for an older game, it really does, like, sell that premise that there's just, like, so many things going on with everybody. And I really, I really like that. It feels, like, quite, like I said, like, fleshed out. That, like, you can be, like, you have what I need to do, but then there's a Jedi doing, like, another investigation thing. And I just, just love how the story, like, uh, or the world, like, connects with a bunch of other stuff that we can choose to participate in or not. In a way that makes it, like, quite, like, fun and engaging. Where it's like, oh, cool, we get to sol solve a crime. We'll, uh, pull out the old, uh force a notepad and uh, start interviewing them and see if their facial expressions give away lies because uh, we've got really good facial animations in this game. <laughs> what did you find out about the body? My preliminary analysis of the body indicates that he was killed approximately three hours ago by a single energy blast to the torso. Is there any other information you need? Okay, three hours ago to the torso. Tell me about these planes. These planes are rife with wild animals, not all of them benign. The Iriars are mostly docile, but can easily be provoked to violence. Cat hounds, on the other hand, are much more deadly. There have been over 35 catalogued attacks on settlers by cat hounds in the last two weeks. A general advisory was given out three days ago to carry a weapon at all times when on the planes. Small farms and holdings dot the planes and can provide safe refuge for those in need. Is there any other information you need? Is that other species that he spoke about, the ones that are flying in the sky? Uh, well, there's more questions later. Very well. I will be here to assist you. It looks like it could have potentially even been like a hunting accident or something like that, where he's gone to like shoot a cath hound and like shot his friend in the back, or maybe it was like planned, but we'll see. We'll speak with Handon. Ah, greetings. You must be assisting Master Baluk in his investigation. I'm Handon Gould. Perhaps you've heard of me? Ooh, you could lie to like play, you know, it could be like smooth and like kind of get him on my good side and just be like, yes, of course, I've heard of you. I'll get him to butter up to me. That's a good idea. For context, by the way, we're entering a period of this game where we're like a Jedi character. And I think the Jedi are assholes. Controversial take. We've seen time and time again how the Jedi fail in their hubris. Is one of my favorite 
characterizations, like one of my favorite moments is Luke, while we may have issues with the sequel trilogy and like The Last Jedi and all of that kind of nonsense, um, I've, there's some really good shining pieces of, of stuff in the in the sequels. And one of them is when Luke is talking about the Jedi allowing Darth Sidious to rise, you know, and their hubris and all of that kind of stuff that like the Jedi failed uh, with, with all of their kind of teachings. And, um, you know, it's really like that's I agree with that. My favorite Jedi is Qui-Gon Jinn. I fucking love Qui-Gon. Uh, I love Ahsoka, who is who doesn't identify as as a Jedi, but has a really good path and story, um, even to a point. Not necessarily the Sith Lord Dark Side part, but I also really love Count Dooku. I love um, I love him as a character as well. Dooku is awesome. So, like, you can love Jedi characters. Love Yoda. You know he's great. Love Mace Windu, but Mace Windu's an asshole. <laughs> He's a terrible person. Um, so it's... And I, Obi-Wan Kenobi is the best Jedi. You know, we, we know this information. But um, my general take on the Jedi as a collective order is it just don't work. So when I do a thing where I go, I'm going to lie, you know, I just, I just think about dear old Qui-Gon Jinn and what he would do because he's great. And I wish that he survived because I would have. I would love a what if Star Wars scenario, like Marvel did a what if show. I would love a Star Wars what if because there's just so many moments where it could change everything in a way that's so interesting. I want to know what if Qui Gon Jinn survived in Episode One, how things would have gone from there. It just would have been oh so very cool but anyway back to the point at hand because if i get too off track i could ramble about star wars until the end of time and we won't do that right now maybe later but of course mr gould really <clears throat> well mm -hmm. then i Success. assure you on my reputation i had nothing to do with the killing i will help you with the case as best i can though you see i was out here running earlier today yes running i do that a lot can't stand speeders never use them Keeps me in shape, too, you know. Anyway, I was out running on the other side of that bridge there, when all of a sudden I heard a shot coming from over here. I ran over and found this man Calder lying on the ground, dead. Okay. Did you see the killer? I saw Rickard come skulking out of the shadows of the rocks south of the river, and I knew something was wrong. I hit my emergency button and called the Enclave right away. Well, there. That's my story. Now, please hurry this up and arrest Rickard so I can get on with my day. It makes me wonder if this will be, like, painted as it looks, or whether it, like, one of them is wrong. It's either exactly as it looks, or there'll be a, there's a surprise in that it's actually the other way around. Another Jedi, huh? Helping that Twi'lek investigate, no doubt. He seems stumped. I'm Rickard Lusoff. Maybe you can figure this out and let me get out of here. Well, this guy sounds much less polite than the other guy. Well, I was out hunting Eriaz when I spotted one over here by the bridge. I pull out my rifle and aim at it. I couldn't see it that well, mind you, because the damn sun was in my eyes. So I shoot it and it drops. I walk over here and find Handon standing over Calder's body. So why don't you get this whole farce mm. over with and send that whiner Handon to the prison he belongs in? Where's my ability to reach into their mind with my, with my force powers? put my hand on their head and make them relive it. Okay, so I guess that species, that uh, creature that they're talking about, is not the flying creature, but it must be another another beast that we have yet to encounter. I mean, this seems way too... It seems way too clear-cut. You know what I mean? It's like, this guy was like, ah, I can't see, and I was trying to hunt this thing, and I shot my gun, and then he was this other guy was there. And this guy was like... Well, I saw this guy, and then I saw him coming out of the shadows. It's it's so... Hmm. But then it's like, who's telling the truth here? Is there any other information? So, he doesn't have any information about... Interesting. Is there any other... I mean, it's a laser blast to the torso, man. How can I be a further assistant? I can ask further questions. There we go. So he was running, and we know what he saw happened, but you're holding your side. Are you injured? It, injured? No, of course not. Why would I have been? 
Fit as a bantha. <laughs> That's, I run. I don't know if I mentioned that. Hmm. Fit as a bantha. Okay. Interesting. How can I be a further... Of course. Of course. So he's not injured, but he's holding his side. Which means it's like... Could he have potentially been like... Injured in trying to murder this guy. He like shot him in the back, but not before he like stabbed him in the gut or something. So, what do you want to know? Bollocks, uh, Baluk said you were limping. Are you hurt? Well, I kind of sprained my ankle running through the bush before I found the body, but it's nothing that serious. Hmm. So, what do you? Hmm. I told you already, didn't I? Yes. Was hunting some eerie ass. Haven't seen many in the area recently, what with those calf hounds acting up. Was in my blind a little south of here when I spotted one, like I said before. I shot, and pow, it went down. But when I come over here, there's Handon standing over the body and the eerie as was gone. Now I don't have nothing to do with this, so can I go now? Ah, please, <laughs> so, you... Um, okay. Right. So... He was, I think the direction might kind of play into this, because he said it was south of here, which is down this way. Oh, shit. You may leave if you wish, but if you do, I have no choice but to tell the Jedi Council that you lack the wisdom. I was going to go investigate, like, where he was potentially, like, sitting. Because he's, he's facing this way. And if he was shot in the back, um, which, by the way, that's like, you can see the... Like, you look at that. He's facing... Yeah, like, he's lying face down over that way. But south is over this way. So if he was shot in the back, it would be coming from this way. But this is also the bridge. So I think that's something to take in mind. See, this is the thing. I overthink things very easily. So I would be a terrible detective. So, what do you want? <laughs> because I would miss the obvious shit and go, da -da 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 -da, you know, like. I told you already. So hunting areas in my blind, a, little a little south, south of here. I one. Like I said, now I don't have no Right. So he was south of here. How can I be a further? And well, actually, he was I, I didn't over across anything. the bridge, and then he came bridge. over. I just got here when I saw. Rick. Mm. I had no idea what he was going to do, so I. Master Baloo came out here with his droid, and I hope that you'll be able to make a more informed decision. Of course, of course. Based on the direction of the body that has fallen, he said he came over the bridge. Like, that puts him in sort of the vicinity of this, you know what I mean? And then he was shooting somewhere off to the south with the sun in his eye. The sun's, at the, the sun's facing the other way, so if he was in the south and shooting, the sun would have been behind him. So the, the sun shouldn't have gotten into his eye. This is tough, because... He is saying that, like... Ah, the sun! Even though if he was south, which is this way, he'd be facing this way, so it'd be fine. But then the body is facing the other way when the bridge where this guy was, so god damn it. Is there any other... And I can't get any more questions from hence these guys. Oh, well, tell me about the planes again, actually. Let me, let me see again. Well, I mean, what if it was just, what if it was just killed and mauled by a, but, I don't know. It did say it was a laser burn, like, wound. Yes, is there something I can do to help you in this investigation? I want to discuss the murder. Now you tell me what happened here. These three men were out here in the field together earlier before the clouds broke. I find that very odd, for most people would seek shelter when the sky is filled with dark storm clouds. Shot in the back of the blaster rifle. A rifle was found lying near his body. Okay, with blood stains on it. Yeah, so there, there is another... There is another blaster. Okay. I want to discuss the murder. I feel like it's our dude uh, holding his side because a blast rifle was planted on his body, I think. He's like shot him in the back from behind and gone over the bridge. 
That is my choice. I think it's him. Because... But then, you know, even so, the other dude's story doesn't exactly line up either. Very well, we should start at the beginning. If we find the truth behind each piece of the puzzle, we will no doubt resolve the case. Handed said that he was nearby and heard a shot and ran over, only to find Calder already dead. He said Rickard came out of the shadow of the rocks holding a blaster in his hands. Rickard said that he was hunting Eriaz, saw one through the glare of the sun, and shot at it. It is possible that Rickard may have shot Calder accidentally and Handon may have found the body, but that seems a very unlikely explanation. It is more likely that at least one of them is lying. Obviously one of these men is not telling us something, but where does the truth lie? I'm gonna... Oh, I reckon Handon is lying. Also with the way that he talks about like, he did? Oh, no, like, I run. I, I told you that. You know, that sort of stuff. Like, he feels like the more suspicious out of the two. Hand in his line. Why do you believe that? Okay, why... Why is that the first comment? Like, what? Okay. He didn't mention the weapon found by the body. That's actually true. He didn't mention that. True, he didn't mention it, but he didn't deny it was there either. It simply had no bearing on the question as asked. I do not believe this is definitive evidence. What he said was not directly false. If you are not unable to deduce the facts of this case, I will have to take these men to the Enclave and deal with this myself. But since you have talked to the suspects, there is no harm in you trying a bit more. Okay. So I don't have more the, all the information at hand yet? I know who is lying now. Handon. And then it says... What the fuck is that? He was here at just the right time. What is this top comment? Is this why we're talking about like the running thing? I'm gonna pick it. It feels weird, but I'll see what the result is. That is a novel assumption. The degree of copulence in an individual has not been scientifically linked to honesty, and I find your adherence to that belief remarkable. It does not, however, constitute evidence. Um, yeah, that's so weird. Uh, I will continue my investigation. Well, how far am I able to leave the area? Because as soon as I try and leave, he's like, you know. Because I'm wondering if there's any environmental evidence. You know what I mean? But I don't think we can go too far. Is there any other? My preliminary analysis of the park. Is there any other? These planes are like there have been oaks or farms. Is there any other? He doesn't have any more questions for us. So, what do you want? Well, I was out hunting Eriaz south of here, and I saw one over by the bridge. The sun was pretty much right behind it, though, so I couldn't Oh, I guess it was three it. hours ago, so I the sun could have moved. When I came over here, I found Handon standing... Calder must have been hunting it himself, because there was a rifle lying close to the body. Bullock's got that now. Mine, too. I want that back. Wait. Wait. Calder must have been hunting it himself because there was a rifle lying close to the body. Bollock's got that now. Mine too. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I misinterpreted what he was just saying. <laughs> so Bollock's got the, the rifle and his laser rifle too. I want that back. Okay. So, what do you... God, this is a tough one, isn't it? Well, I was out hunt. I shot, and when I came over here, Calder must have been hunting it himself. So, what do you want? Right. Okay. Well, we've asked him those questions. I've asked him for their... his questions. Yeah, well, actually, I, I didn't see anything. I was over across the bridge. I heard a shot and came over. I can tell you I was sure surprised to see Calder's body lying there. I just got here when I saw Rickard coming out of the rocks holding his blaster. I was terrified. I had no idea what he was going to do, so I hit my emergency button and called the Enclave. Master Baluk came out here with his droid and started questioning us. I hope that you'll be able to make... Mm. How can I be a further... Mm. I was taking my daily constitutional. I just happened to be running by when I heard a shot. I ran over and found Calder's body lying there. Yes, quite often. I generally prefer running to anything else. Can't stand speeders. A healthy body will breed a healthy mind, as I always say. <laughs> In injured? No, of course not. How can I be a further assist? Of course, of course. Mm. Okay, well now, I'll, now I'm gonna pick... 
Do I have another option now that I've done more stuff? He was here at just the right time is so weird, because that also isn't conclusive. So what if I pick this guy? What can I say? There are no... Ah, uh, well I guess that's true, but also at the same time... Oh yeah, it was cloudy, there was no sun glare. See, I told you, I'm a terrible detective. He was being rude to me. Yes, well done. It was very cloudy this morning. If it had happened, as Rickard said, the sun would not have been visible at the time of the killing. You seem to have caught Rickard in a bit of a lie. It seems I was correct in assuming you could help me with this case. This lie doesn't prove Rickard is guilty, but I think you have taken the first step in unraveling this mystery. We should proceed on to the next point. We need to find a motive for the killing. Maybe you should talk to the men about their relationship with the victim. If there is anything you need, I'll remain here while you question the witnesses. Okay. I accused the wrong guy, but I mean, we'll see. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. He just might have, like, slipped up. Because, yeah, I forgot the detail that it was cloudy. Because I was like, three hours ago, the sun's over there. There's a lot of things to take into consideration, guys. I told you I'm not a good detective. Um, let's, let's try, let's try again. Let's get some more information from him. So, what do you want to know? Did you know the victim? Yeah, I knew him. Hell, we've known each other for a good long time. Doesn't mean I really have to have liked the slime ball. <sighs> <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't be so hard on him. Especially now that he's dead. We actually got along pretty well most of the time. We just had our differences. We were actually business partners. We were involved in some orbit-to-ground transport operations for Aerotech. Can I leave now? I should probably be the one to give the news to his wife. Mm. So, mm. what... Why would someone want to kill him? You Jedi are so predictable. Always seeing some greater purpose behind everything. When the simple answer is usually the right one. Can't you see that it must have been Handon? <laughs> I found him standing over the damned body. I don't know why this is causing you so much trouble. You almost seem as lost as this Baluk guy. Yeah, you seem you seem more suspicious by the second so, now. What do you want? But we'll see. Right. Let's talk to the other guy. How can I be of further assistance? I knew him a little bit, but I was not any sort of great friend to him or anything. I never really associated with him that much. In truth, I didn't really want to. He had a reputation. A very inconsiderate of family, I heard. But merely having heard unkind things about someone wouldn't make me want to kill him. No one says you killed him yet. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a bit agitated. Why must we remain here? Can't you see that Rickard must have shot him? How can I be of further assistance? Okay, I've got nothing else out here. Of course, of course. What about the droid? Is there any other... Ah, there we go. The Southwood Speeder rental business has records that over the past several weeks, a speeder had been rented by Mr. Netic and Mr. Gold. Is there any other information you need? Oh, a speeder had been rented by both of them, same speeder, and he said he was not a great friend to him. Why would you rent a speeder together? The Southwood speeder rental business past several weeks, a speeder had been rented, or like, is it a separate speeder, or the same one at the same time? Like the same speeder, but at different points? According to the municipal authorities near the Garan spaceport, there had been news of violent drunken activity in the cantina attached to the port. Apparently, a Mr. R. Lusop was making accusations at a Mr. C. Netic about cheating him in a business deal. Uh. Jedi Tuka was dispatched to the scene and restored order. Is there any other information you need? Nah, there's, there's too... there's too much... There's, there's too much pointing towards Rickard. The reason why I went for... Handon initially, because I was like, I was trying to take in some other variables that just don't seem to really play into it in hindsight. So I was more just like, based on the positioning of the thing and where I had my sun, like where I was thinking about the sun would be at the time, I falsely was like, this guy. But this guy has really just put himself in a corner, to be honest. Oh. Especially with public records available about like them having business disagreements. But then also there's the matter of the speeder. We know Rickard lied about the sun blinding him while he was shooting, but we need more to go on. Let's examine the relationship of each man with the victim. Handon told me he barely knew the victim. On the other hand, Rickard and the victim were business partners. However, according to Rickard, they got along quite well. On the surface, neither man seems to have a motive for killing Calder. 
That's um, well, not necessarily true, because Rickard is lying. Why do you believe that? They had a fight over business matters. It is not unusual for business partners to disagree sometimes, but if he found proof Calder was cheating him, things could escalate to violence. Well, that certainly is a motive for murder. The case is taking shape. However, you mustn't jump to any quick conclusions. Perhaps we should now focus on the murder weapon itself. You might want to see what information the witnesses uh, and the information droid can provide you about the blaster found near the body. If there is anything else you need, I will remain here while you question the witnesses. Okay. So, what do you want to know? What about the weapon found by the body? That blaster? Never seen it before. Calder himself had a preference for Ichani weaponry. He had this one really nice light blaster rifle that he always used. Always wished I could get myself a rifle like the one he had. Ichani's make delicate weapons with too little firepower. Lightweight stuff, if you ask me. That blaster ain't it, though. Calder only had the one rifle, too, so he either must have borrowed that, or it's someone else's. Hmm. Okay, so that's not confirmed as Calder's rifle. So, what do you... You thought Calder was cheating you. Now, I don't love Calder, but we go back a long way. We run a suborbital shipping and transport company out of Garang Spaceport. We've been partners in that business for well over 20 years, and we've been doing just fine the way we are. Okay. Right. <laughs> you can't deny it, but there was some bad blood between you. Right. How can I be of further assistance? What do you know about the weapon found by the body? That blaster was stolen from my house last week. I never knew what happened to it. I hardly have enough money to afford a single blaster, let alone another. I can't tell you how important it is to have a weapon on hand with all these ravenous cath hounds around. Even an Eries can take a man down if it gets in the mood. Every settler has a weapon. It's our most prized possession. I would most appreciate it if I could have that back after you determine that Rickard is the killer. How can I be of further assistance? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you know about the weapon found by the body? He said it's his. That blaster was stolen from my house last week. I never knew what mm. happened to it. I hardly have enough money to afford a single blaster, let alone another. I can't tell so you that, how So it is his blaster. On hand with, even an eerie as can take a man down if it gets in. I would most appreciate it if I could have that back. How can and I And he wants it back. But I, I realize this must seem like a motive to you, but I assure you it isn't. I dislike Calder, true. I would punch his face in, given the opportunity, but I would not kill him. Um... Yeah, that, so, I don't know, maybe maybe the Force is true, and I am suspicious of him for a reason. It's like, it could be anyone at this point. This is this is why being a detective is hard, and I just play video games, guys. <laughs> we get to simulate, simulate it. My wife was cheating on me with him. Oh, that's motive, baby. He slept in my own bed while I was in the next room. Oh, that's motive, baby. As much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. I must try not to take the law into my own hands. I was just out running, trying to clear my head for the divorce proceedings, not stalking him to kill him. Running is not a crime. Hmm. It's like, damn it, my wife's boyfriend didn't let me play the Xbox last night. I'm gonna kill him! <laughs> How can I be mm, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. You wanted to kill Calder for having an affair with your wife. We can provoke him. We can provoke him. See if we can get something out of him. And push him. Knock his block off, maybe, sure, but not kill him. Oh my. I hope you don't find that incriminating. You know, normally I'm not prone to outbursts like that, but Calder... He's genetic. He was not a very nice person. Mm. Not a very nice person to me or my family. I had had my suspicions for several weeks, but had no proof until two days ago. It seems Calder was seeing my wife. Right under my nose, no less. Well, if you can't keep her, it's your own fault. But, as much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. I was just out running, try- Okay. Of course, of course. There is so much motive stinking on this guy now. So he has a motivation to, to kill him. He was also having these emotional outbursts, so he could be like... He's obviously probably immediately regretted what he's done, and his it's his blaster that was stolen from his house. That's way more incriminating than this guy, like, 
you know, not being able to, like, talk about, like, the weather and stuff, but, like, oh, both sides, man. So suspicious. Is there any other... Is there a report of Handon's blaster being stolen? I am sorry, but I seem to be failing you. Mmm. Yep. But I cannot seem to come up with anything at all. I thought to find the record of the missing weapon report Mr. Gould filed with the authorities, but there does not seem to be one. Is there any other information you need? Yeah. My hunch was right, but for the wrong reasons. But it is him. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, tell me about the weapon you found at the scene. We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample, other than the fact he did not belong to Calder. Is there any other information you need? Okay. That's it. Very well. I will be here. Alright. Well, I'm going for you, baby. Oh, oh, yeah, is there something I can do to help? I want to discuss the murder. Oh. Uh, the blaster is Handon's. He lied about it being stolen. Blasting belonged to the victim. Oh, I guess we're going for this one. So, we have caught handed in a lie. Interesting, but I think we may need one final piece of the puzzle. A lie on both sides right now. A lie for a lie. What if it was just both of them and it was a coordinated effort? <laughs> there was a blood sample on the weapon that had been sent back for analysis just before you arrived. Perhaps you could inquire with the information droid about it. If there is anything else you need, I will remain here while you question the witnesses. And then we find out that it was Baluk the whole time and it's his blood sample. Is there any other information you need? Tell me about the blood sample. I have just received back an analysis of a sample of the blood found on the weapon. It had been sent back to the enclave just before you arrived. The blood on the weapon is definitely not Calder's. Unfortunately, there was a bacterial contaminant in the sample that had been taken back to the laboratory and it had become degraded. We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample other than the fact it did not belong to Calder. Is there any other information you need? Well... All I have on this is holding his side makes for uh, Handed holding his side and Rickard holding his leg. Very well. I will be here to assist you. I definitely feel like he's got this injury in relation to the blaster. I assume the blood on the weapon belongs to the victim, but I want to be thorough. What have you learned about the blood on the weapon? It didn't belong to the victim. That is surprising, so the blood must belong to one of the suspects, but which one? Well, I would say it's Handon's blood. Why do you believe that? He is clutching his side. Hmm, Handon has been moving oddly since I arrived. Perhaps we should examine him a little more closely. Hey, 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 what are you doing? There is blood. Handon appears to have suffered some sort of blaster wound to his side. It seems there is one likely scenario. Rickard killed Calder for cheating him in business while shooting Calder. He must also have also hit Handon by accident. What? You think Rickard killed Calder for cheating him in business while shooting Calder. He must also have hit Handon by accident. Mm, I don't... Ah. Uh, hmm. Have also hit him by accident. Nah. I don't think that's possible. It's possible that Calder was just... Was, uh, sorry, Handon was going to shoot Calder and then... Rickard made, like, that false move and shot Handon in the side. I don't have a choice to back out from this point. Handon seems like the guilty one. Instead of saying they are both guilty. Interesting theory, but what do you base that on? What possible motive could he have had? Calder was cheating with his wife. Yes, I concur. That is a good motive for Handon to have, and Handon being the killer matches with the facts of the case as presented so far. And so you have made your judgment in this case. I can leave now, then. I could let you go for a hundred credits. Stay out of trouble from now on. What? No! Yes, Mr. Gould. Is there something wrong? Do you not feel justice has been done here? Do you not feel you should be taken to the Enclave for sentencing? No. No. If I'm going, I'm not going alone. You don't know what you've done! Okay, what do you mean? Look, I came out here, I admit, to kill Calder, but so did Rickard. He must have thought it was Calder when he shot and hit me. So I'm going to prison, but I shouldn't be going alone. Did you idiots have to let the slime ball go? 
It appears your investigations are incomplete. I imagine if we examine the business records, we will discover Calder had been cheating Rickard. That information would have been easily accessible through the information droid. You should have looked into it during your investigation. Yes, you tentacle-headed moron! I came out here and killed Calder, but Rickard was here to do that too, and he shot me by mistake. That's what I said! No! I will return to the Enclave with Mr. Gold in custody, and I will also have the authorities apprehend Mr. Lusoff. It is a minor inconvenience, but one well worth the cost if you have learned your lesson here. I realized your judgment was incorrect, but I allowed you to make it so you could understand that there are always consequences to our actions. As a Jedi, you must always remember this. Good day, and may the Force be with you. Echuta. <laughs> Damn it. We were so close, because I literally said that. I was like, well, if there's a blaster wound involved, then Rickard would have shot as well. Damn it. They were both guilty. It was, it was so close. But I, I'm satisfied that we did not give up on the investigation. We didn't give up. So I'm happy with that. Murdered Settler. You solved the case, sort of. <laughs> you rightfully concluded that Handon was the one who actually killed Calder, but you failed to realize that Rickard was also planning Calder's murder. Unfortunately, Rickard was unable to get away while you were accusing Handon. Hopefully he can be recaptured. I mean, we, we did a decent job. We did a decent job at that one. And then, unfortunately, just, you know, failed to actually succeed uh, in the end. <laughs> but it is... It is what it is. Um, I mean, not bad though. Like, genuinely not bad. That was a fun little piece of uh, fun little piece of detective work for us to do, though. To actually take in all the variables and, and talk to people and stuff. That was like a like a nice little well-realized side quest, you know, into getting uh, getting obtaining information and, and getting the facts straight and stuff, and how we, you know, eventually did have. The correct answer, like right in front of us, but unfortunately, we did not uh, did not succeed. Get this guy. Let's go. Nice. Yeah. So there were no. Yeah, there's only Karth out here. So that's also like just really proving it as another lie as well. Okay. So we've got two entrances to the Sandral grounds. But we also should just go to the Ancient Grove now. So the Ancient Grove is our main destination. So we'll probably look at going to uh, this other location later. So let's backtrack finally and go to this go to this grove. And we got some remains. Uh, oh shit! A fucking red lightsaber! Holy fuck! There's just like a just there's just a like dark Jedi just chilling. Oh my god! I'm gonna get fucked. This energy shield isn't gonna do anything either. Give me that fuck out of here! What the fuck, dude? Give me my grenade. All right, that still took. Oh no, my dudes are getting killed now. All right, hold on. Aww. I'm just gonna do this. Sorry guys, you're gonna take damage in this fight. It's for the it's for the good of the <laughs> It's for the good of battle. Off you go guys. It's okay. We'll keep going. They'll be okay. They'll live. Even though they've been killed. You You are strong. Stronger than me, even in my <laughs> Take my grenades from a distance. <laughs> I love what the fuck stronger than me even in my darkness. I love how she's like, yeah <laughs> We would have lost that fight I'm like here's the thing you got to learn about me missy is I am also a Scoundrel So I ain't gonna just fight with a lightsaber if I know it's a losing fight I'm gonna throw grenades at you and sacrifice my Mandalorian friend unfortunately <laughs> Why did you attack me? I am Juhani and this is my grove. This is the place of my dark power. This is the place you have invaded. When I embrace the dark side, this is where I sought my solace. It is mine. Jesus. So this is the dark power surrounding the... the grove. When I slew my master, 
Quatra. I knew I could never go back. Oh, but now I revel in my dark power. Power enough to crush the life from someone such as you. Or so I had thought. Wow. The dark side is never powerful enough. <sighs> what is it you want? Why do you bother me? <laughs> me just <laughs> throwing grenades at you. <laughs> I was sent by the council to cleanse the taint from this grove. The council has sent you here to kill me. Why then, when you bested me so easily, did you not simply finish your task? Is it not apparent that I can never be saved? Persuade, I have no desire to kill you, Jihani. You... you do not? I am pathetic. I sit here and think myself to be great by embracing the dark side, but I am nothing. There is no way I could be turned back. I always thought they held me back, or jealous of my power. This is only because I was not good enough to meet their standards. I never have been. Come now, Jihani. You are a beautiful young woman who has much talent. Interesting. The first step on your path of true knowledge is knowing that you are ignorant. I thank you for your kind words, Jedi. I seem to still have much to learn. Both about being a Jedi and about myself. But I wish the cost of my ignorance had not been so high. I wish that my master had not suffered because of me. It is not your fault, Jahani. You, even, even though it, it, it kind of is, but that's okay. I only wish things could have been different. If she were alive now, there would be so much I would say to her. So much I would apologize for. How can the council ever take me back with what I have done? Striking my master down in anger is unforgivable. I actually wonder what will happen. I'd be very curious. Would there be a trial that would be done? Do not worry, Jahani. They will surely take you back. I should convince them that I am truly repentant. That I am willing to forsake the dark side. And maybe, just maybe, they would accept me back. Do you think they would? Could it be possible after what I have done? Of course it would. They would always accept you back. I thank you, Master Jedi. I will return to the Council then. I shall submit myself to their judgment and hope they will forgive me. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future. Wow. Those, uh, those persuasion checks be, be hitting different. Off goes Jahani. We've cleansed the taint. <laughs> Jedi Trials, you've redeemed the fallen Jedi Padawan Jahani and removed the dark taint from the Meditation Grove. Interesting. Cool! Alright, we succeeded in all our persuasion attempts. The game definitely pushes you to... The game definitely pushes you for the persuasion choices, because those are the ones that you get, like, success things out of, which I assume you'd get more experience out of as well. Because um, otherwise, it's like, you can do the other options, but it feels like doing persuade is going to get you the best outcomes. So you're almost inclined to do it. I kind of wanted to as well. Um, take my moment to be like, yeah, I am a nice Jedi guy. Even though I accidentally bailed on my friends and threw grenades at you all. <laughs> I'm, I'm a perfect Jedi. I'm a, I'm a shining... I'm a shining example of Jedi nobility. Um, and we can just return to the Ebon Hawk and go back this way. So we'll return to the Ebon Hawk. Uh, and then we can run through here. I need to remember what who this guy is looking for again. Um, Rundil. Okay, Rundil. Haven't heard that yet. Um, I'll keep my eye out for I have not come across someone with that name yet. I believe there was passing dialogue that someone mentioned about uh, Master Quatra that Jahani um, killed. Please do not disturb me. I have pressing matters at hand. Okay. Um, this is a good opportunity for us to... Ah, Jahani is in the courtyard. Hello. There you are. I must give you my thanks. Because of you, I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. Have you spoken to the Council? I have spoken to the Council. And they have helped me see the truth. The truth about myself and the truth of my actions. Quatra's injuries were not so severe as I first believed. I was foolish to believe I could harm a master such as she with my, my clumsy efforts. 
The fierce confrontation between us was nothing more than part of my training. Quatra wanted me to understand the threat of the dark side, to see how easy it was to fall from the path of light. Wow. After our last battle, Quatra had nothing left to teach me. I needed time alone to explore the turmoil of my own spirit. Only then was I ready to follow a guide. You. Back to the light. When I left, Quatra knew her work with me was done. There are other disciples who need training throughout the galaxy. And she could not stay to see if I passed this most difficult trial. With your help, I have passed this difficult trial. The Council now feels I am ready to continue with my training. Though they have asked me to wait here for the time being. <coughs> You have been given another chance to prove yourself. I hope you use it well. Giving you a second chance like this is a clear sign of weakness. Sometimes I find it hard to believe the Jedi could defeat my people in battle. I do not know what the Council has in store for me, but I will trust in the Force and the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. Cool. It's also cool that both of them chimed in. Zalbar actually does say things. Jedi Trials. Johanny has been accepted back into the Enclave while the Council debates her case. It seems that redemption can come even to those who have fallen so far. Wow. Very forgiving, uh, to be honest. I, I can't get over these NPCs in the background. We're in the middle of a conversation and they're just fucking like zooming around and glitching. It's so good. <laughs> um, but yeah. Redeemed. Just like that. Just come back and be like, yeah, I did it. So Quattro is still alive. So there you go. No, no worries. And then, um, yeah, Cress's uh, response of just being like, yeah, the Jedi's ways are strange indeed. I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> they kind of are. All right, let's speak to this guy. Let's see if he's got anything for us on what's going on. Why are you bothering me? Oh, no, there you go. Nothing. He still kicks us out of conversation. Interesting. Perhaps after we speak to the council, now that we have cleansed... Uh, cleansed the taint we will um we'll see if uh we can progress that one let us speak to the jedi council hello everybody i must congratulate you on your actions you have saved johanny and brought her back into the order and have given us all great hope for your future success may the force be with you as you continue your training Okay, nice. It is good to see Johnny has returned to the way of the light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Go to Master Jar and inform him that Johanny has returned to us. I think you may be nearing the end of your apprenticeship. Man, we speed running Jedi training. Greetings, young apprentice. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? As chronicler of the academy here on Dantooine, you should ponder the history of Revan. Okay. May the Force be with you. He doesn't have any updates. If you have questions, you should... That's fine. All right, Master Zar. Yeah. We speed run in Jedi training. We're just like, fuck yeah, do a couple of tasks, recite a Jedi code, bing, bang, boom, build a lightsaber. I'm going to be the Jedi Master of this council in no time, dude. We are just... We are, we are quite gifted. I, I truly hope that they, they don't try and pull a Chosen One prophecy on me. <laughs> Leave that in the prequels. <laughs> you have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified, and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Because of you, she walks once more in the light. But though she was saved, do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side. As are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training, and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way, and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our order. Nice, dude. The Jedi Council. Now that you have been accepted as a Padawan, the Jedi Council might tell you more about the bigger picture and what you must do. <sighs> Is this bigger picture going to tie into that, like, my confusion about their uh, old mate's Rook's conversation? 
Right, you won't talk. You there. For good or ill, you are now a true Padawan. The time has come for you and Bastilla to investigate the dream you shared. The secrets to stopping Malak may lie hidden within the ancient Dantooine ruins you both saw in your visions. Nice. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Dantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. Okay. Uh, what happened to the Jedi who went to investigate? We do not know. That is one of the things you must investigate. We fear the worst. Is there anything else you want to know? Okay. No, I'm, uh, I can't back out of this. Bastila. Bastila was there. The way ahead will be difficult. Oh, nice. Now I can choose my squad. So we've got Bastila with us. Um, ah, oh, there's our other party member then. Jahani will join our party. That's her, uh, that's her silhouette. <laughs> there you go. Um, if we've got Bastila, I think I'll take Karth back with me again, because we've got good banter between the both of them. It might open up some more dialogue, so we'll do that. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine! must be punished. The council will look into this matter, Mr. Metale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof, and we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing. How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into a son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. Family drama side quest. Yeah. If Shen Matali has not returned to his father, it may ignite a savage and bloody feud between the Matali and Sandral estates. We must not allow that to happen. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in the real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. Not to mention that I wouldn't mind getting out of this enclave for a bit. I mean, come on, how bad could it be? Bro, you've had it easy this whole time, you've just been chilling. <laughs> Who's my, like, I'm a Padawan then. Is, is Bastila gonna be my master? Is that, is that the way? Is that the way of things? I have nothing left to teach you, Padawan. Though a Jedi is ever learning. Even the Masters know their training is but in its infancy. Now is the time for you to seek wisdom outside the training chambers. The lessons that yet await you are to be found beyond the walls of this academy. You should speak to the Council, Padawan. Now that the first stage of your training is complete, I am certain they would be eager to have you aid us in our struggle against Darth Malak and the Sith. Interesting. For good or ill, for good or ill. Greetings, young Padawan. As chronicler, you should pop. Okay, it's the same May stuff. May the force be with you. Thanks, team. All right, I got my squad. Uh, we've got a family matter to attend to. 
go resolve some business between two families while also finally going to those ruins with Bastila. So that's going to be awesome to check out and I guess get some revelations or some insight into into what's going on there. So we'll bring this episode of Knights of the Old Republic to a close with that one in mind. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, an extensive lore-filled Jedi training episode where we've finally ascended uh, after such a long and arduous training, we are now a Padawan, uh, and I'm, I'm so excited to see how, um, how these ruins are going to go next time. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then.